Welcome to Tech Brothers with Ahmed. Today we are going to learn how to execute store procedure in script task in SSIS package. I don't want to just execute a store procedure and show you how you do that. Instead of that, I come up with an, uh, a scenario in which we need to get the folder names from FTP directory and insert into the SQL server table. So we will create a SQL server table, we will create a store procedure to insert the folder names and then we are going to create SSIS package from scratch and then we will be using the script task with the FTP connection and ADO.NET connection inside and we will be getting the folder list from the directory and then we will be executing a store procedure that we have created to insert the folder names into the SQL Server table. So this is more uh, better I will say it is much better as compared to just executing a store procedure so this scenario can be used how to get the folder names from FTP directory and insert into the SQL server table so let's go to SSMS and take a look right now what I have here I have a, a DDL statements so first of all I'm creating a table and uh, this table has uh, just two columns it has a dent id um, so this is one comma one and i have folder name column that's worker 100 so let's uh, run this uh, statement in the test database now we we have created a table next part is uh, we want to create a store procedure that can take a folder name as an input and then insert into the table so i have said create procedure that's how you create a procedure then give the name of the procedure so dbo insert folder name that's the store procedure name and then we have a declared input parameter so at the rate folder name worker 100 and then we always say as begin and then we have always our statements here in the big in begin and end block here i'm saying insert into table and values is coming from the folder name as id is identity i don't have to put it here but if you are more curious about that you can go ahead and mention the column names here so i have only one column so when i put the folder name it will go automatically to the folder name column so i don't have to put the columns but if you have multiple columns it is better to put the list of those columns and then have the values in front of that so here cut this out put it here and then you have values here and here you have co comma second column third column and um, whatever number of columns you have it you keep putting it and here in the values you will keep adding them next you have end now let's run this uh, store procedure state ddl statement it is going to create a store procedure so it did create a store procedure now we execute the store procedure in ssms to test if everything is working fine now if i run this store procedure it should insert one record in the uh, ftp folders table so run the statement to see if the record is there one second let me change that one to grade now we run it and you will see one result uh, sorry one record is inserted and that's what the test is we have used this statement if I want to rerun it with the other one I can go ahead and run it it will keep inserting the folder names whatever we will provide as a parameter to the store procedure next we want to create an SSIS package that can go to the FTP directory wherever we will say in this case i'm going to provide the root of this this ftp and i want to get all the folders on the root so here is my ftp uh, F, uh ip address uh, i'm using it and uh, this uh, th these folders we have archive sales and test folder and now we you can have maybe ftp.yourcompanyname.com in my case i have ip address so we are going to use this one in uh, this demo you you have to have provide uh, password and uh, username um, most of the time and uh, if your company let you do without a username and password that's fine but for security reason we have a, us a username and password always set up N let's create a SSIS package new SSIS package 
and here first of all we'll create FTP connection and we are going to go to the connection managers pan right click here new connection FTP connection add and in the server name we will provide the IP address or the server name uh, if you see here I did not provide FTP colon backslash backslash if I will provide that then it will throw error so the only thing we need to provide is the IP address or the uh, server name without uh, those FTP and colon and backslashes here you will provide the name and here you will provide the password test it out it is tested successfully I'm going to rename this one FTP connection so just to make it easy without spaces and next uh, I'm going to create a ADO.NET connection to my SQL Server database so let's create new connection and here we have to provide a server name or we, we can write it uh, by ourselves or we can uh, click on the drop down and it will bring us those servers uh, what we have in the list right I, I will recommend writing it because sometimes it can take whole lot of time to bring all those server names from your network and uh, here you will be providing the database name test the connection looks good hit ok so that's the connection now let's rename and call it ADO net test so that's how we would know that this is ADO dot net type and it is connecting to the test database one more thing we will need to do we need to create a variable I always create the variables and parameters in my package because I w if I want to change some value let's say tomorrow I don't want to write read the values or the folder names from this uh, directory maybe I want to read from next directory so I have the option to go and change and just uh, the value of that variable or a parameter by using the configuration so if I, we are using old version such as 2005 or 2008 we had been using configuration by using the variables now in new versions we are using the parameters so we have package level parameters and project level parameters that we can use in the configuration so I recommend creating parameters or uh, variable depending upon your version of SSIS you are using it so in this case let's create a, a variable called remote folder and here we are going to have string and I'm going to provide backslash that means on the root level so on the root what we have when we connect to the FTP that's what we see on the root level now we come back here and the last thing we have to do we have to bring the script task here and then open it here we will select the language uh, we can we have two options we can select the C sharp or visual basic so I'm going to select the visual basic for this demo and now we will be selecting the variable that we have created the remote folder hit ok hit edit script and instead of writing entire script by myself and keep sitting for 20 minutes I have written the script already and I'm just going to paste it and walk you through so you will understand exactly what I have done and it will save us some time so I'm copying that script and pasting it here in the main part of this program so control V we are good here first of all I'm creating some local variables so if you are using visual basic you will say dim variable name and then as and then provide the data type here so dim string folder array as a string and you see the parenthesis that tells us this is array that can hold more than one value and then I have a string file array that is also string type array that can hold more than one value and then I have a single vari vari local variable folder name that's going to uh, hold the value for us uh, and it is string type I have a remote path uh, that is going to hold a remote path for us uh, and I'm setting uh, the value of this variable from the SSIS variable so that's how you do DTS uh, dot variables and you have small parenthesis in VB.net you have double quotes user colon colon remote folder that's the name of the variable from SSIS and then you say dot values dot to string so you are saving uh, 
the SSIS variable value to the local variable in script task. Once that's done, we will be making connection to the ADO.NET. We will be using that connection we have created. So we'll say dim ADO.NET connection. Uh, this is a, the new name. You can give any name as client SQL client dot SQL connection. So that's we are, uh, are telling. Okay, this is a new connection we are creating, uh, and this connection is equal to the connection manager we have created inside the package so that's what you need to provide here and then once that's done we will be able to use this connection further uh, in our code now we are making a connection for the ftp we said dim cm connection manager you can name anything what you like connection manager and here you will provide the exact name of connection manager you have in your uh, SSIS package and then you say FTP and require connection so we are requiring a connection we are connecting with FTP here we are saying set working directly on which directory we are working so we will be working on the remote path that values come in from this variable and we have set that to backslash that means it is we are working on the um, root directory we can change the value of remote path uh, by using by changing the value in the remote folder variable in SSIS and we can point to any other directory and it will read all the folders uh, from that directory next uh, we are saying FTP get listing uh, and we are getting the list uh, of folders uh, and of the file names uh, from that uh, uh, directory so it will be getting the file names and uh, and the folder names from remote path directory so here if you see what we have on the root level we have three folders and we don't have any files if we would have files it will read them as well but we will be only interested to insert the folder names so we will ignore the file names and we are checking here if string folder array is nothing it means it does not have any folder maybe on the root we don't have any folder so what happened just close the connection and that's it but if you have some value come to the else block and use the for each loop and this is a variable we have created get the value from the string folder array save into the folder name and then message dot show uh, massive bug that show folder name this is going to pop up just the value and show us it read the folder name the next we are saying dim sql command text as string so we are declaring this one as a string we are saving the value we are building our statement here we are saying sql command text is equal to execute our store procedure name and if you remember we have to put single quotes around the values here if you, you have put the single quotes around the values so we have to add that value here as well so I have put the single quotes then I close with the double quotes and I have plus sign here then I'm using the folder name variable that we are getting from the string folder array we are looping through every time and getting a new folder name and then I put double quotes and single quote and double quotes so this is gonna be the last single quote uh, that's how you will uh, put the values here you have to use double quotes around it and then put the value whatever you want to put inside and here we are saying message box dot show SQL command Co show me the command you have prepared it so it's going to pop up this whole thing uh, execute uh, store procedure and then show the folder name here so that's that's how we will be able to see if everything is working fine and it, it is building the correct statement next uh, we are saying dim command cmd database as sql command and it's just showing us uh, uh, this red arrow here let's click here and add that uh, um, class here so we are saying uh, import system dot data dot sql client is missing so we can add that this part is going to go under the imports here so you will see that this one you can add by yourself if you would not add it will give you option here the same way I have added just click here and it will let you add that class so once you are done with adding a class you can use that class and methods of that class to run the SQL statement so we are saying okay dim database 
use this statement and this connection and then we are executing that query and we, we don't have any input parameters or anything so we are just executing that query we will loop through for the next folder name and once this is done FTP connection will be closed and we will be done with the and if that's starting with the here so long description fine hit ok save it build if uh, there would be any error you will see that save it now we have uh, two values already here but it should put another three records uh, because we have three folders here let's go and run it hit ok execute it it's executing right now and uh, we should get some pop-ups so here first of all we get the folder name then uh, it bring uh, us uh, or prepared the SQL statement and this is the SQL stat statement it prepared and this is what it is going to run so it's an execute db insert folder name and then archive uh, is the folder and that's going to go, go in the um, as a parameter to this uh, store procedure hit ok so if we do that it is going to run that statement and then insert one value here so you see that next time when we do that sales it is running the store procedure ran it the value is done and then the next time it is going to put the test folder and it's done so that's how we have all those three folders coming from that root directory now let me go one step ahead and if we change the directory to the test folder so if we change the directory to test folder it has three further uh, subfolders so I we can do that as well if we just want to change it copy this one go to the package but one thing if you notice that this package is only getting the directories or the folders from the directory main directory it is not a looping through all of them so if you want to create that you can go ahead and loop through the subfolders and everything but um, in my case I just want to show you how to uh, get uh, the folder names uh, from main directory or uh, from one directory and then uh, uh, get, uh, put them uh, into the SQL server table by using a store procedure so in this case let's say if I change the test folder and I can go run it and it should get three folders for me and they are Asia Europe and North America so Asia inserting Europe inserting North America and that's done so these are the folder names I had in this uh, test folder so they are they will be inserted into the table now if I run this one I see those are here you can further enhance as, as I said that you can uh, uh, loop through and get all the subfolders and everything but the goal was to show you how to run a store procedure in a script task in SSIS I have used the ADO.NET type connection you can use OLEDB connection and um, write your queries and you can um, you know perform that uh, but when uh, we are dealing with the script task uh, it is much easy to uh, use ADO.NET connection and uh, um, write uh, those SQL statements and call the store procedure or results or updates or whatever you want to do from there so go ahead we'll explore it and uh, you know you will uh, learn new things and uh, one thing uh, don't just watch the video and say okay I learned it and it's working great I will say go ahead and watch it and do it so by doing it you will learn the different errors and how to solve them and what type of errors you get and uh, that helps uh, to enhance your development skills thanks very much for watching this video and I will see you next video